Hello my soccer universe. <laughs> Let's do this right after um, the Classico. I, I slept in between uh, to talk about what happened in La Liga. I will add on uh, Ligue 1 also, but I will not put anything from um, Liga Nosh because the big ones are playing on Monday and Tuesday or something like that. It's a very weird round. But I might tag on to the review video of the cup round. Uh, Let's get right to it. La Liga, we know that it was the El Clasico. Uh, Real Madrid won. We'll talk about that um, last because let's go through the other results uh, that happened on Friday evening. Real Sociedad got a workmanlike win over Real Valladolid. Um, they were for most of the time the better team. I have to say, I, I, they, I take some liking to those Valladolid uh, away jerseys. Um, Mostly the better team get the lead through Yanosai after they all had uh, all the big ones had chances, but then they needed to really hang on and at the end and it ended the lead had a glorious chance to equalize. A bar with a relatively easy win over Levante, uh, make it 3-0. I saw some Valencia against Betis, where Valencia, especially uh, second half, where Valencia was largely the better team and uh, got the lead through Gamero. And then they were kind of wasteful with their chances, but Parejo in the 89th put the game finally out of uh, reach. However, this did not mean that the game was out of reach because Betis put one back through Moron in the 93rd. Leganes, Alaves, 1-1. Uh, Leganes' troubles will not get less uh, through that. Granada against Vigo was a goalless draw. Fortunately, I didn't watch that one. And then, uh, probably the craziest game of the evening, uh, of the um, Sunday, was Sevilla against Osasuna, with Sevilla not playing great. And I say Sevilla is probably one of the most frustrating teams in Europe, and they proved it once again. Enesiri gives them the early lead in the 13th minute, and then, uh, very scrappy game. It was actually some luck that Ocampos made it 2-0 before the half, and you thought the game done and dusted. Uh, it got even better when Herrera, in the 54th for Sevilla, uh, got sent off. I mean, the ball seemingly hit his chest at first, that's what the referee saw, but it needed three different angles from VAR that you could see, yeah, he played it with his arm as well, and since he was outside of the box, that's a red card. He went off, and you thought, Sevilla is cruising now. Everything but. Hernandez in the 64th had it in uh, to make it 2-1 for Osasuna. And then uh, another VAR decision where um, the Sevilla player is in the box uh, and ball is played and he's right at, uh, at the edge and it looks at first like everything is close. But no, he had the hand out a little bit, hits him, VAR decides it's a penalty and Torres makes it 2-2. Sevilla up until that point was in complete tatters, but they collect themselves and make a final push forward. And in stoppage time, Enesiri gets the win. Uh, that is huge for Sevilla, as we will see, but was rather, rather lucky. Bilbao gets a 1-0 over Villarreal. Espanyol, Atletico Madrid, 1-1. I actually have, have to say, when I saw the highlights, yes, Atletico Madrid had some really good chances as well, but overall I had the feeling that Espanyol was better in that one. Uh, the goal for Espanyol was scored after Vule, uh shot through a Savic uh, own goal. Um, they could have added on to Bruges and Niguez with a wonderful shot. Makes it 1-1. I think Morata from close range hit the post, but overall I thought es Espanyol, at least from the highlights, was better. Getafe gets a 1-0 at Mallorca, which uh, will help them a lot as well. And then El Clasico. What can I say? This was probably the second worst Clasico I've seen in a long time. Uh, tactically interesting, but I have to say, for me the Clasico has... This season, it seems like it has totally lost its luster a little bit. Um, Barcelona had the better start and had lots of possession and was maybe not as timid as we have seen them in Naples. But exactly, Napoli have given them a blue, have given Real Madrid a blueprint on how to really cause trouble to Barcelona because most of the time, Real Madrid was hanging deep. And Barcelona cannot penetrate that. And it was even so that uh, Real Madrid was maybe a little bit more um, dangerous on the counter. But I have to say most chances fell clearly to Barcelona. 
uh, where especially Arthur needs to make uh, something out of his chance late, late in the first half. There was a shot by Messi. I have to say, Messi was very uh, active, but I felt he didn't have his best game, to be honest. But overall, it was hanging tightly in the balance. Uh, it was really who will score the first goal. Second half, um, Real Madrid came out to play. And Isco forced a wonderful save by Ter Stegen. Isco had a header that was uh, saved by uh, Piquet on the line. And you clearly could see that uh, Real Madrid is ratcheting the pressure up and finally uh, saw, okay, this Barcelona side could be vulnerable. Then Setien makes a great substitution, uh, brings on uh, Breathwaite, who immediately has a big chance, uh, where probably they should have done something. Then I remember a scene where uh, De Jong nicely plays a ball through Messi, who is clear, and this would have been a sure goal not too long ago, no? Marcelo catches him and um, takes the ball off him. And from that, that was basically the last thing that we saw from Barcelona. Because then Kroos plays the ball out onto the side to Vinicius Jr. Even points him, go there! And we know that Vinicius Jr. is not a big goal threat, but this time he takes a shot, takes the deflection of Piquet. 1-0 Madrid. And Barcelona, I never thought that they have it. It seemed like this was the decider. And it proved to be, because uh, Mariano Rivera comes on in stoppage time to waste time, but he makes the goal. And it is 2-0 uh, Real Madrid. And I have to say, I didn't expect this Real Madrid performance, but given that Barcelona was also shaky in the last few uh, games, they got the wins though. Uh, yeah, it was a deserved win for Real Madrid, who now are top again. 56, Barcelona 55. They too seem so vulnerable and that no one else can challenge them is actually a little bit of a travesty. Sevilla is now up in third, Getafe fourth, Atletico drops to fifth, but those are separated by two points and add Real Sociedad to the mix. And slowly Valencia is coming. Remember last season, Valencia moved up safely into fourth spot in the end. Um, I don't want to talk much about the midfield, so let's go straight to rele relegation where... Um, with Vigo picking up another point, it seems more and more foregone conclusion that it's Real Mallorca, Leganes and Espanyol that will be the ones really relegated. Espanyol already has five points behind Vigo. Yes, there's a lot of games to, 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 to be played. The way Espanyol is playing is at the moment not like a team that's going to be relegated, but it's such a horrible uh, first round that, yeah, it does not look good for them. Then let's go to France, where Marseille had more trouble with Nîmes than one would expect, but they were clinically in finishing. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Nîmes had chances. I think uh, even Nîmes took the lead yeah, to Ferrat, but Benedetto with the first shot on goal makes it 1-1, uh, uh, and later on 2-1 with his uh, more or less sex as a second shot. Then Nîm really came out, but Benedetto with a counter-attack, a third or fourth shot, makes his third goal. And Nîm can only pull one back in stoppage time. PSG with a win that took a lot of work, uh, especially Cavani wasting chances. I mean, Sarabia got the early goal, but then they didn't score for a long time. Then Mbappé makes it 3-0, uh, Icardi 3-0 shortly thereafter. Uh, he came on for uh, Cavani and Mbappé. Uh, at uh, fourth. Uh, Amiens loses at home to Metz. Angers uh, wins at Brest. Monaco 1-1. Uh, Toulouse loses against Turin. Uh, again, Turin. Uh, Montpellier 3-0 over Strasbourg. Uh, Lille, the, I should have watched highlights. So Lille uh, wins at Nantes. So that's a big win for them. Bordeaux nice 1-1. And Lyon gets another win. 2-0 over Saint-Etienne. So in the table there, uh, PSG clear. I think Marseille also clear in second. Rennes and Lille uh, currently fighting for the European spots. Lyon maybe could get in there. Maybe. Let's see. Uh, again, broad, broad, broad midfield. Uh, not at 11 is only three points behind fifth. So it is really, really, really 
tight and Baudouinger are also in there. Um, if we go a little bit more towards the bottom, Amia and Toulouse look like they're out of it. Dijon and Nîmes will be the ones who will be fighting out for the relegation spot. Saint Etienne maybe gets in there. That would be a big one. So, well, that's it for uh, the highlights of um, La Liga and Ligue 1, what I saw and my take on it. Let me know what you thought about the games, especially the Classico, or if you saw any anything else, drop a comment below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.